So, planning for a br brilliant career in the new year. Welcome, everybody. It's, it's really a pleasure to be talking to you today. My name's Jane Jackson. I'm a career management coach. And here's just one quick slide so you know who I am. All right. So um, I'm the author of Navigating Career Crossroads, uh, which is a definitive guide to all things careers, in particular, a career transition guide. And I'm also host of Your Career podcast on iTunes. And the podcast is quite interesting because I interview a lot of professionals who've made really interesting career changes. So if you're interested to see how people have made massive changes from being a school teacher to an interior designer, or from being a Canadian Air Force pilot to being a social media guru, uh, their stories are really quite interesting. Also within the podcast, I provide a career guidance and advice. You'll find me on iTunes, just, just type in your career podcast um, with Jane Jackson and you'll be able to find me or on my website at janejacksoncoach.com. It's there as well. So that's enough of me. Okay, let's move on to 20 ways to get set for a great career in the new year. Okay. So first of all, now what I'm going to go through initially are the very simple basic things that I know you already know, but you may or may not do. And then I'll get into uh, a little bit more of the strategy later on in this particular webinar. Okay. So first of all, some of the basic things that you need to get done are first of all, clear your inbox before you go on holiday, because there's nothing worse than having so many emails just cluttering up your mind, knowing that you need to respond to them. So get as much of that done before you go away on holiday. Okay. You see very, very basic. I'm sure you knew this, but it's good to get it done. The second thing is declutter and organize your workspace. Because if you've got a really messy desk and you come back to it after a very relaxing, lovely family holiday, um, you're going to start the new year off on a bit of a um, a messy start. So let's have a nice clear desk for you when you begin. And when you arrive back all happy and relaxed, you can hit the ground running. Yep. And so speaking of hitting the ground running, make a list of what you want to get working on right from the beginning of the new year. So you put it all down in writing, prioritize it, and then go off on holiday, forget about it. So you can just relax, and enjoy the Christmas period and clear, clean up your social media posts. Now, if you happen to use social media, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram, think about how you want to be perceived by your network and your connections online. Because if you're on social media and if you don't manage your privacy settings well, that means people can actually find you uh, if they make a Google search on you, perhaps it's Facebook or LinkedIn. And just be aware that everything that you post needs to be a reflection of who you truly are. So have a think about that. If you're someone who really goes nuts on, on social media, on Facebook, um, think about some of the comments that, that you may be posting or some of the pictures that you might be sharing. We're all adults here, so I'm sure you didn't need me to tell you that, right? Okay, so your connections and clarity before the new year. Before you go off, I'm sure you'll be sending Christmas greetings to people. But you know what would be quite nice is why not include to certain special individuals who you really would like to leave a lasting impression on a thank you for how they have assisted or supported or encouraged you during the past year. That would be such a nice way to get things started um, with regard to building that strong relationship. And whether you send it as an email or whether it's, you know, going by snail mail with a lovely Christmas card, try and make each, um, every, every correspondence that you send out a little bit personalized. That will be really lovely. And then when you reach out, or you may be reaching out to them in the new year, it's not going to be such an impersonal way of doing it. I hope that makes sense. Now, connect with relevant people on LinkedIn. Now, if you've started to think about where you want to move towards in 2018, because, you know, people always tend to think about the careers at this time of year. It's new career, uh, new year, new career, that sort of thinking. So think ahead and think, okay, whichever direction I want to go into, who would be some key players that I would like to get to know a little bit better in the year ahead. Look for them on LinkedIn and see if they've got a LinkedIn profile. If they do, request to connect by sending a personalized invitation and give them a good reason why they might want to connect with you. Okay. If, if 
you don't know how to do that. If you go to um, your desktop or your laptop or your mobile, when you click on connect on a desktop or your laptop, there will be an option to add a personalized note. If you're on a mobile device or an iPad, don't just click connect because it just goes off with a generic request. Look for the three little dots at the top right of the window on your mobile device. And if you click that, you'll see that there's um, a drop down menu and one says personalize invitation. So personalize the invitation by saying, hi, Jen or Marie or Margaret, um, it would, you know, I, I would love to connect with you because, and then give a good reason why. Okay. Now, next thing will be ask for feedback from your manager um, about what to work on or improve upon in the new year. So if you get some feedback from your manager, that would be so helpful because what did you do well? What, what could you have done a little bit better? What was really outstanding? I'd, I'd suggest that you make a list of what you think you did that was really good, just in case the manager has forgotten. Because remember, everyone's got their own um, agenda and they, they're concerned about their own careers as well. And so maybe something that you did back in January this year might not be top of mind for your manager as well. So write down the things that you'd like to discuss. Just say, hey, can we have a casual coffee catch up? OK, or a casual chat just about how I've done the past year. It's not a formal performance review you're asking for. It's just a catch up. Just say, hey, how do you think I've been going? Are there areas that maybe I could improve upon or spend a bit more time on? What do you think? Because I want to set myself up for really doing a great job for you in 2018. It would be nice just to have that little bit of a chat. Don't be shy. I don't know who you, uh, how you feel about that. If anyone thinks, no, I can't do it because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not brave enough to, to actually contact my manager, uh, pop it in the chat section and we can have a, have a bit of a discussion about it as well. Okay. So next thing, your personal branding. This is starting to get into the nitty gritty now, because this is really important. How you project yourself in person as well as online is all to do with your personal branding. Okay. So first of all, I want you to think if I'm going to progress in my career moving forward, I, I really don't want you to, to let it just happen. I'd like you to plan it a little bit strategically. You've probably noticed if you're connected to me on LinkedIn, there's um, a lot of uh, activities that I actually post on LinkedIn and also on my Facebook business page that is quite strategic. It's to let people know my area of specialization. What about you? Write down what area of uh, what your expertise is and how you might be able to get the word out to the people who you want to know about what you can do. And one of the easiest ways is through uh, online branding and social media. Okay, so first of all, write down what is, what is it that you want people to know? Is it your leadership capabilities? Is it your amazing learning and development um, uh, instructional design? Is it your transformation and change or your planning capabilities or your uh, business analysis or your communication skills or your presentation? So many different things. I don't know what your area of expertise is, um, but write it down. And once you know what your keywords will be, for example, for me, my keywords are career, LinkedIn training, resumes, career development, career transition. Those are my keywords. I want people to know about that. And therefore, everything that I actually project out to the world covers my keywords. All right. So that's one thing to start thinking about. What you want to become is the go-to expert in your field. And in order to do that, if you enjoy writing, all right, it would be fantastic if you wrote a few notes about um, maybe, you know, say, say if it's transformation and change, and there was an article that you read about or an event that you attended that was really inspiring to you about transformation and change, why not write about it? And you can publish it. Now, don't, don't panic. I'm not saying start publishing right away all over on social media. I'm just saying you can write things down so that you've got some content that you could use and drip feed it out over the year. I'm just going to stop here. Am I going too fast, too slow? Does this make sense to those of you who are listening in? I'll just wait for a little while and see and see if you say anything in the chat box. Um, all good so far, Margaret. Okay, that's great. 
uh, Jen and Marie, I hope, I hope that this is okay too. All right, so I'll, I'll carry on. So becoming the go-to expert is really important. You might think, oh, Jane, I'm just doing my job. You know, I don't consider myself an expert, but let me tell you, everybody has got a mountain of value that they can offer to the world. All of us do. Whether you're Oh, I don't know, the office cleaner, all the way through to the CEO, everyone has their area of expertise. And so even if it's someone who feels, oh, Jane, I'm merely cleaning the office space, they, they know about um, the cleaning solutions, how they can plan their time so that they do it more effectively. You see what I mean? It doesn't matter what aspect you're in, you know what you do very, very well. And I'd like you to start to jot down a few notes about that area. Now, create a publishing calendar. I'm asking you to go probably a little bit outside of your comfort zone if you're not used to writing and publishing a blog or um, even commenting on online platforms. But if you think, okay, I can write about, um, well, I guess the easy example, say, say if I just use myself as an example, I can write about resumes. I can write about career development. I can write about interview techniques or how to negotiate or uh, personal branding or presentation skills, something like that. So what I do is I have a calendar for the year of articles that I would like to get out there or information that I'd like to get out to people so that they will learn something. Now, the content might not always be something that I write. I might be sharing someone else's article about how to prepare for an interview, but it's still my area of expertise, but I still um, can share this article, whether it's on LinkedIn, which really is the best platform for career. If I share that and it's someone else, I'm helping them as well, but I can comment on it and give my two cents worth. And so that way, every time someone sees a post that you share, it's always to do with your area of expertise. And slowly over time, you will become the go-to person who either creates their own content in that space, or is someone who shares great content in that space. So you're in the know. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So far. Okay. Good. Thanks, Jen. Um, anyone else? Nope. Okay. So listening now, buy a new professional outfit. Nothing nicer. Okay. I see that it's all ladies who are listening in at the moment. Nothing nicer than a nice new outfit. Don't you think ladies? And so if we have a professional outfit that we know that's going to be our go-to outfit when we need a confidence boost or we know that we need to look good that day because you're going to ask for a raise or you're going to do a presentation or you're going to be um, maybe uh, leading a meeting with a group of team members. You want to look good. You want to look like the professional that you are. I don't mean that it has to be really formal, but it's just an outfit that matches, that's good colors for your skin tone, makes you look and feel good, is comfortable and climate appropriate. And wouldn't that be a nice Christmas present for yourself as well? fantastic boost. I'll have to tell you that I, I bought this one jacket specially for uh, delivering uh, presentations and I, I wear it all the time now simply because it's my, I know I look good in that jacket jacket and um, it makes me feel very confident when I put it on. And so one day, uh, Jen, because Jen, you know me, I'll show you the jacket and I'll see, see what you think. Okay. So I carry on. Next one. Keep learning, ladies. Okay. Um, please read two career books. Okay. Every month, if you can. If you can't, then read one career book a month. Now, it doesn't have to be any particular book, but I reckon that it would be, for example, if you Google best books for planners, if you're a planner, or best books for engineers, if you're an engineer, or indeed mine, Navigating Career Crossroads. Oh, it's such a good book. <laughs> okay. But if you, if you Google your area of expertise, there will be some amazing books. For example, Ariana Huffington. Um, her, her book Thrive is fantastic. Um, Brene Brown. Uh, her, her, oh gosh, I've just forgotten the name of it. Um, Brene, oh, it's this one. Wait, let me just get it. Hang on. This one is fantastic. Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. It's not a career book per se, but what it is, is it's how the courage to be vulnerable transforms the way we live we parent and we lead. So this, this is like self-leadership in all aspects. It really is um, a good book. So 
I mean, you can ask for recommendations from other people. I've got so many recommendations of great books that you can read or just Google some career books because that will help you to plan for the future. A good one for careers is what color is your parachute? Because there are a number of exercises in there that um, you can complete in my book as well, Navigating Career Crossroads. I've got a whole series of um, clarity questions in the career that might be helpful. So to continue keep learning, identify your goals, where you want to be moving forward, yes, and is there a skills gap? If you're not quite sure, you know a good thing you can do is get onto LinkedIn, um, type in, say if you want to become an HR director, right? So type in HR director and you will get a whole list of people who are HR directors. I would do a little bit of research or stalking as I like to call it and have a look on those people's profiles and see how did they get to where they want to be. I mean, if you want to be a chief financial officer, a CFO, have a look at other CFOs. How did they get there? If you want to be a career coach, have a look at mine. How did I get here? Um, and now some people have got a clear career path. Others are a bit more eclectic. But what you can will be able to see is what qualifications they have, what certifications they may have. And that will give you an idea. If you feel that you might be lacking in a certain area, you'll think, oh, they're really successful there. What can I do? Can I take um, that particular qualification as well? So, so think about it. Um, say if you want to be a project manager and you don't have Prince2, most project managers have got PMBOK or Prince2 as a certification, and you notice that many of them have got one or the other of those certifications, you might think, mm, in order to get to that level, I need to take that certification too. So once you've identified your skills gap, think how much is it going to cost? How long is it going to take? Will the company sponsor me? If not, am I willing to pay for it myself? And then sign up and do it. Um, so many of the courses these days are online so that you can do them you know, part-time and in the evening and you can stop and start as and when you want as well. Skillsoft or Skillport is a a great source to go to, even on LinkedIn, because Linda on LinkedIn is the learning platform. So LinkedIn Learning, you can have a look for their courses as well. Even Google has got a whole host of free courses. Um, they're predominantly to do with social media, though. But there will be a lot of courses that you can sign up for. All right. And then sign up for a seminar, a talk or a workshop related to careers or your specific career. There are so many that you can actually sign up for. And, you know, if you go to um, eventbrite.com, E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E.com.au, and uh, in the search field, you type in whatever topic that you're interested in, I'll bet that there is an interesting uh, course or an event that you can go to that will give you some inspiration. If you type in careers, you're going to find lots of things. LinkedIn, for example, if you type in LinkedIn on Eventbrite, lots of LinkedIn events. I actually hosted one two days ago down at Lot 1 in Sydney. It was great. Um, it was all for LinkedIn people to um, network with each other, taking the online connections offline. That was fantastic. Everyone seemed to really enjoy it. We had about 30 people. But um, if you're thinking it's HR or if it's engineering or, or if it's operations, all you need to do is either Google, but go to Eventbrite or Meetup dot com that's another good website and find uh, an event or a seminar or a course that you can attend all right now the next one planning this is the hard bit when it comes to um, your career moving forward sit down and think give your get yourself a glass of wine or a cup of coffee okay wine in the evening coffee during the day and sit down and write down all the good things that you have achieved career wise in the past year what were your biggest wins? What problems did you solve? What improvements did you make? Just think, did you streamline a process? Did you identify a wasteful procedure and improve it? Did you automate something and save a lot of time? Did you improve profits or did you increase the sales effort? Did you motivate someone in your team who was demotivated? Did you learn something new and then somehow implement it in your role, write down everything that you did because that is your ammunition for your career in the future. Okay, write it down. If you don't write it down, honestly, in two or three years' time, you won't even remember it. And usually, when I'm working with people who are going through career transition and we're updating their resumes, 
that's the most time consuming bit because they can't remember everything that they did. But if you always keep a journal and you write down, you know, actually I, I delivered this project and it was great. Write it down so that it's, it's fresh in your mind as the year goes on. All right. Next thing is update your resume with those achievements. And how do you actually write the achievements in your resume? I like you to use a problem action result methodology. Okay, write that down. Problem, action, result. State the situation that you encountered and then what were the actions that you did or maybe you led your team to do and what was the tangible result? If it's quantifiable, a percentage improvement or a dollar figure, that would be great. If it's time savings, you know, you can write down how much time savings or if it's a perceived benefit, you can still write down um, which you know was well received within the, the group perhaps or which improved motivation considerably okay not everyone has got tangible results that they can write down but if you put those as a bullet point into your resume it's ready to roll and that's really good for performance reviews as well or if you want to ask for a pay rise yes okay create a one-year plan what do you hope to achieve in the next 12 months Break it down into a month by month plan. Each month, what's the one big thing you want to make sure you get done that will assist you in your career by the end of every single month? So that means by December next year, there will be 12 massive goals that you will have completed. If you, if you have lots and lots of things that you think, oh, I've got to implement it all within a month, it's going to be so daunting that you'll probably not do anything. But if it's one thing, one thing a month, and you've got it there and you think, okay, let's see if I can go through it. And if you don't actually complete it, don't beat yourself up. It's a plan, okay? This is what I plan. If I couldn't quite finish it this month, then I'll push it over to the next month. But let's not push January's all the way through to December, all right? Because that means you won't have got anything done. I wonder, does anyone have one big goal that um, they'd like to complete before the end of next year? Margaret or Marie or, or Jen, if, if you're still there, if you've got one big goal, or do you have any idea what it might be? Are you happy to share? If not, I will carry on. Okay, so into your health. Oh, someone's no idea, needing inspiration. Okay, Margaret. I wonder what, what area of expertise, what do you do, Margaret? If you're happy to share. I always love just asking. <laughs> okay. Um, at the moment, you're in policy. Okay. And does that make your heart sing? Do you love it? Yes, no, maybe. Mm, it's okay. <laughs> Perhaps, oh, no. Okay. What? You mean people don't love policy? <laughs> okay. Well, well, Margaret, what's what's so funny is my, my stepdaughter, she, she's at Treasury, New South Wales Treasury, and she wanted to get into, she, she's, she's an accountant, basically. She was leading a team. She used to be an audit before. And all she wanted was to go into policy. So you see, some people love, love that side. So, all right. So if policy is not what makes your heart sing. And I, I think it's so important that, that things do make your heart sing. Think about what it is that you really enjoy. What do other people do? Okay, within local government, New South Wales, within your council, who has got a job that you think is quite, oh, that's really interesting. Because then, oh, wait, I need to go back. We're going to put back to the planning because since I'm still talking about planning, you know, what you hope to achieve in the next 12 months. Okay, so, so think about what they do. If you think that's really interesting, then why not make it part of your plan? One goal could be in January to have a chat with people who seem to have really interesting roles that, that draw, draw you in. And one goal will be to network with three people, say, in an area of interest. How easy is that? Because when you make those have those conversations, what happens is you learn that, oh, okay, that great job. When, when I listen to the way they describe it, it wasn't as amazing. The grass is not always greener, but it would be so good if you just bit the bullet and thought, oh, you know what, I'm going to ask them, say, I'm really interested to find out what you do. What is it like to be a 
oh, I don't know, learning and development officer, <laughs> for example. You know, what is it that you really do? How did you get here? It's so interesting to ask about people's career paths. That's why I interview people on my podcast, because I want to know. And you'll find that most people love to talk about themselves. Um, and it just depends on the way that you word your questions. So I don't know if that helps, Margaret. Okay. But obviously, I'd be really interested. So I might want you to tell me about policy. Maybe that's an area I would be interested in. <laughs> you see, you never know. So moving on to your health. All right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Margaret. I appreciate it. So really important, your health. Without health, we have nothing right? So make small changes. I don't know, you know, how healthy you are. Maybe you're all marathon runners and you go to the gym all the time. I don't know. But if not, because sometimes work takes over so much, make small changes that will improve your sleep patterns, your diet, your exercise and relaxation. There are so many magazines and books out there about this. I'm, I'm actually an ex-personal trainer and fitness instructor. I used to be sponsored by Nike back in the 1990s, would you believe, when I was in Singapore. So I know a lot about this, but um, I don't think you need me to tell you about this because you know what you need to do. Once you're aware, make sure you make little changes every week to improve upon the exercise taking time off, being mindful, etc. All right. And then create a morning routine. Have you heard of the miracle morning? It's amazing. There are all, all these people who um, talk about the miracle morning. And what it is, is if you start your mornings on a positive note, everything else seems to fall into place so much better. And what you need to do um, with a miracle morning is, is that studies have found that people who get up early um, are a lot more productive and seem to be a lot happier because they get up early and they do things. So if you say you set your alarm five or six o'clock, five o'clock is impossible for me, but six o'clock is doable. Seven is much more doable, but it's a bit late in the day. But say if you wake up and you think, okay, when I wake up, I'm not checking social media. I'm not checking emails. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go and do some exercise. Even if you just walk out the door and you power walk for 20 minutes, which is what I do. Every morning I wake up and I get out the door. That's it. Um, mainly because, you know, I have to look after my health over the years. I've had some health issues. And one of my doctors said, Jane, you know, I keep healthy. All I do is I go out my front door and I turn left and I don't come home. I don't come home for an hour. <laughs> right. So what I do is I go out, out the front door, I turn left and I come back in 20 minutes, but I power walk. And so that's great because it set me, set me up for the morning. Then I have a shower, then I have breakfast, make sure you have breakfast and then get on with the day. If you get up early enough, you get stuff done. The minute you get some exercise under your belt, feel so good, doesn't it? So if that's not in part of your routine now, then, um, maybe you might want to start. What about meditation? Some people like to meditate. Some people roll their eyes when I talk about meditation. <laughs> okay. But if you give yourself 20 minutes to breathe and just internalize a little bit and just clear your head, honestly, scientifically proven that it lowers your blood pressure and it lowers your heart rate and it puts you in a really good frame of mind so you can tackle the challenges of the day. All right. One thing that honestly is fantastic is if you get yourself a journal, preferably something that looks good, maybe a leather bound journal or something like that, or in a, a color that you like. And every evening, just before you go to bed, write down three good things. They might be small things. It's like I had a chat with someone who looked a bit grumpy at the supermarket checkout today and made her smile or him smile. Um, that could be a good thing. Or maybe, you know, I chatted with the Salvation Army guy at Wynyard Station today, or I actually uh, had a really good chat with my son or my daughter or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be career related, but if you put a gratitude journal of what you are so grateful to have been able to do during the course of the day, because we are lucky, aren't we? Just think, we can get out of bed ourselves. How good is that? We can actually walk. Right? We can walk to our kitchen and make ourselves a cup of tea. How lucky are we? There are people who can't do that. So those are little things that when we appreciate, we become a lot happier. 
practicing gratitude is wonderful. And I think that's something that's so important to do throughout the year. And it spills over into your career because happier people are more productive people. We get more stuff done. Yes. And then, so plan of action. What would you like to do next? Okay. So I'm just going to move myself over here and I'm going to move that over here. Um, now I have, it's a, it's, a Facebook group, basically. If you're not on Facebook, don't worry. But if you are, I have, and it's, it's an accountability group. It's a career accountability group called Kickstart Your Career Accountability Group. That's the um, the link if you go to Facebook groups uh, forward slash Kickstart Career. It's a free group. It's a closed group. No one can see the discussions unless they're a member. Um, and so if you want to join, then just request to join, answer a couple of questions. Um, let me know you're there. And I do a live video session once a week and I answer people people's questions. Uh, there are quite a few active members there who just ask me, you know, Jane, what about my, my resume? Oh, I've got an interview. What do I need to think about? So I provide lots of advice, just free, you know, just live there. And what I want to do is to create a really good um, group who support each other. I've got about 105 members at the moment and they're lovely and they're all over the world. Obviously a lot in Australia, but I've got people in the States and in Europe and in UK as well. So that's something that you can do if you want ongoing support and you like my style. I have a nine day LinkedIn challenge so that you can update your LinkedIn profile. If your LinkedIn profile is hopeless, this is a free thing. It's a free challenge. I, um, I released it two weeks ago and I got 70 people sign up. They've all gone through it now and everyone's been saying how amazing it is and they love it. So if you're interested, drop me an email, jane at janejacksoncoach.com and you can do the LinkedIn challenge and I'll release it again. Um, it's just one email a day with a two minute video with instructions on what you need to do. And then it takes you through every Every aspect of your LinkedIn profile so you can have a good one all right good for your career and um, if you're interested in personal branding for your career I actually do have an online course uh, so if you're interested in that again just drop me an email and and let me know and with regard to career related webinars um, hang on I just need to move oh I can't move oh need to go back. Sorry, I'm clicking the wrong things. Um, if you want more career related webinars and you like the way that I deliver them, or if you want one on one coaching, because obviously I'm a career management coach, please contact Jennifer James at Local Government New South Wales, because she handles all of that um, for, for you. And um, she'll be able to tell you of all the different offerings that I, I have as well. So if that's been helpful, Wonderful. And all that remains is for me to ask, do you have any questions before I say toodle pip and thank you? All right. I can see that you're all still there. Uh, so, so Margaret and Marie, do you have any questions at all? Or are you concerned about anything that you would like to share uh, before I sign off? You're very welcome, Margaret. It was lovely, lovely to have you there. And I hope you enjoy policy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and anybody else? No, I'm going to um, just, ah, do you have tips to update your resume? Yes, Marie, I do. Let me just stop sharing so I can look you in the eye. Okay. Uh, there you go. I'll, I'll move this there and I'll move me over there. Okay. Tips for your resume. All right. So just some really quick ones. Um, it should be no longer than two, maximum three pages long. Also, um, what you need to do is to make sure that you have a powerful summary, which is a positioning statement at the top of your resume, uh, because that is what projects you into the new direction. And in that summary, on a resume, you need to write it in the third person. So for me, it would be career management coach with extensive experience in, et cetera, et cetera. If you're writing your profile, your summary for LinkedIn, then make sure that it is in first person. And you can have a look on my LinkedIn profile if you want. And you can see how I do it. Okay. Just look for Jane Jackson, career coach. You'll find me on LinkedIn. Okay. Next thing is um, your professional experience. Make sure you write down um, the well, I'm sure that you know, you will have seen uh, resume 
uh, templates before. Maybe it's the content that you're thinking about. Um, what I would say is you need to get your accomplishments because most people in the old days, in their resumes, it would be a list of responsibilities. But that doesn't make you stand out because anyone with your job description or your job title would probably have similar responsibilities. But what will set you apart is what did you do that actually added value and made a difference to um, your department or the organization. Okay, so thinking of the problem action result methodology, that's going to be the most helpful for you. So think about a situation that you've been in, which um, uh, you needed to take action. So either you took action yourself or you led your team or your group to do it. List what those actions were and what was the result of what you did. Then what you do is you take the action and the result. So it could be designed and uh, developed new uh, induction program. Okay, uh, recommended to senior management um, of this new initiative. It was adopted as best practice moving forward, which resulted in smooth onboarding of candidates um, in, you know, smooth onboarding of candidates and a streamlining of the onboarding process. So something like that, it's just off the top of my head. But um, if you go action and then result, that's a good short, sharp bullet point for your resume. Then of course, you need to have your skills, your qualifications, your certifications. If you've won any awards, have an award section as well. Um, I have uh, I've got a oh I've got a checklist. Let me just share this. You can see it. It's janejacksoncareers.simplera.com. I think you can see it now because I'm sharing the screen. And if you, it looks like that when you go there, and then if you scroll down and you go to free resources and training, okay, and you click on that, then you'll see that there's all of this <laughs> that I just talked about: the resume checklist, LinkedIn checklist, negotiation checklist, etc. Oh, also, what's here is a free kickstart your career. It's a podcast course, free. You don't have to pay for anything. All of these things are free. You can just um, download it, and you get one email once a day uh, talking about different aspects of uh, the career management process, which you might find useful. But for your question, here's the LinkedIn checklist summary. And Jen and Margaret, I think you would have seen this. I hope I'm going to stop sharing now and it's back to me again. So um, did that work for you? I hope so. Oh, great. Okay. Margaret saw that. Lovely. Well, it was my pleasure talking to you today. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. If you need any one-on-one -on -one coaching, then obviously contact Jennifer James at Local Government New South Wales. And um, I would be delighted to assist if you like the way that I do things. <laughs> <laughs>